the teacher's job um, in an identity safe classroom is to uh, bring in the, um, the identities of everybody in the class to make clear that who you are, what you know, what your family has been through, what, uh, um, what you care about, these things matter in the classroom and that we're kind of dealing with identities all the time. It's not, it's not just the negative effect when somebody does some name calling, it's um, educating all of us that no matter what your identity is, you have something to offer to this classroom, that we care about the histories of the families and the child. We care about their interests. We care about their experience. I think in classrooms there's um, too much focus on competition rather than cooperation and with that comes a sense of um, winner take all and instead of people learning from their mistakes and helping each other. So as many opportunities as possible to let kids show what they know, to bring their interest, to build on that, to work on um, building skills and to, for the teacher to show, I know you can even uh, get better than that, um, to give um, students a chance to redo their work. That kind of thing that shows that uh, we're not waiting to find the smartest kid here, we're trying to make every kid the smartest kid here. That helps not only the kids of color or from diverse backgrounds, but helps everybody in the classroom not only feel safe and valued, but, sh but uh, come to a real authentic feeling that everybody in the classroom does matter. It's, it's a way of sort of taking away um, reasons for prejudice. If, if um, the teacher appreciates what uh, somebody from um, you know, a different neighborhood than the majority of the kids has to offer in the classroom. It's important not just for the uh, children of color, but for um, other students as well. We all belong here. We all have something to offer. And the learning tasks need to reflect that, who, who they are, that, that students can bring to what they, to the classroom, what matters to them, their own curiosities and energies. When students call each other names or in some way put down a, a student in the class, it's really important for all of the students that the teacher respond to that situation, that she recognizes that both the perpetrator and the victim need help here, and um, to let everyone know that this is not the way we talk in our class or the way we treat one another is essential for everybody's well feeling, well, good feelings. Perpetrators are often alienated or scared kids or kids um, that are trying to uh, uh, um, upgrade their social status. And if the teacher can demonstrate that that's not the way it's going to happen here, that will help everybody. We often think that we can exhort kids to do the right thing when it comes to racism or, or um, any kind of na name calling. And I think that truly all these things working together, that is creating a, an identity safe classroom where it's shown every day, every minute, that what you're doing here matters to our class, that you are important. Give students reasons not to need to bully because they themselves, the potential per perpetrators, feel a, more a sense of belonging. If the teacher can think about her classroom on a daily basis um, through the eyes of her students, what is it we're missing? What are we not addressing here? What are we not showing um, throwing light on in the classroom? Who's this quiet one? Uh, who needs to uh, whose voice needs to be lifted up in here. She will have um, less negative things happening and a better social uh, relationship and I believe finally uh, better learning and development among the kids. They will not be distracted with their, um, that their identities is, are d distraction but rather a gift to the classroom. The idea of searching for um, uh, uh, what we now call identity safety came out of um, work on stereotype threat. And as we got clear that stereotype threat is something that is learned and that is in the, in the environment, it's not in a person, but it's in the situations that they have to deal with, 
So um, as um, in a collegial manner uh, with um, Claude Steele and Hazel Marcus and a large district in California, we spent a year in the classrooms of teachers uh, trying to see, kind of looking from the bottom up, what teachers uh, do that may have more positive um, effects on students' liking for school and their performance um, on standardized tests. The idea being that um, that uh, that what we know from stereotype threat about cues and contingencies, that is that uh, the environment can either make a person feel safe and a sense of belonging and a sense of being valued in the classroom, or the opposite, what could it be, what could teachers do that would make a difference about that? We uh, did observations in 82 classrooms in a large district, a very diverse district, and uh, did observations three times in the year, and then did um, a student uh, questionnaire to try to get information about what's going on in the classroom and the effects that it had on students. And we found finally uh, that teachers who did a constellation of things that we're now calling identity safety, um, their students liked school more, they had a sense of um, wanting to go further in school and a sense that their teacher and their classroom was helpful to them and they perform better on the state uh, spring test. So that's a measure, not my favorite, but a measure that um, students' academic performance uh, would be um, affected by what's going on in the classroom. So I would say that what our data revealed was this constellation of 16 things, but to make it easy, I think there's a huge focus on creating a sense of trust and a sense of well-being in the classroom through positive classroom relationships, that is, uh, relationships with the teacher and her students and among the students, that a sense that um, if you're in trouble, you're having troubles doing things or learning things or you've made a mistake, that um, it's not punishment but uh, or bad grades or failure, but that the whole point of this is to help people go forward and, and to learn. Uh, so building trust through those kinds of things, um, having a, a real opportunity for student voice to be in the classroom through their interest, to build on their interest, to bring what they know and can do into the classroom, to use those things in a way that um, uh, promotes thinking and development. Um, when we talk about using diversity as a resource, it's not just about the pictures on the wall, except those are cues and they matter, but it's a lot about having high expectations for everybody, providing a challenging curriculum and support that is needed for that, and bringing to bear what the child, where the child is into the classroom and, and then building on that so that it's not, uh, we're not sorting and selecting, we're developing students. And, and that's a real different approach.